Hello and welcome to the Microsoft Azure 70 534 certification exam preparation learning path. Companies are moving to the cloud and depending on the company, what that looks like may vary. It could be that they use cloud resources to help out with additional capacity as needed, or maybe they're testing the waters through a disaster recovery plan. Maybe it's a hybrid deployment where new development is deployed into the cloud and existing on-prem services feed data to those new cloud services. Or maybe it's a lift and shift where companies move their systems into the cloud and instead of re-engineering them to be first-class cloud applications, they simply mirror the existing on-prem infrastructure and that allows them to start running in the cloud very quickly. The ideal option would be to re-engineer as needed to truly leverage the value of cloud services. So, whatever the path companies take, they're going to need people to understand the requirements that can help them to go from their current state to their ideal state. And that's what cloud solutions architects do. And it's not an easy job. Cloud platforms are rapidly changing, and keeping up with those changes can be exhausting. So, that's why cloud vendor certifications are helpful. Being certified by the cloud vendor helps to set you apart from other engineers. And just as the cloud platforms themselves change, so do the exams. And this helps to ensure that the certification remains a useful, albeit basic, indicator of knowledge, or that it's replaced by a certification that is. Azure has been rapidly evolving over the past year or so. Tools and services have been deprecated or superseded, and the Azure 7534 exam, which is targeted at solutions architects, hasn't been updated in a while to reflect those changes. So, as of the time of this recording, some of the information on the exam is a bit dated. And that's sadly the nature of the tech industry. So, you're going to want to watch for updates as they come out in the coming weeks. That being said, let's check out the agenda for this learning path. Here are the knowledge domains that are covered as part of the exam. First up, we have Design Microsoft Azure Infrastructure and Networking. This covers things such as how the Azure Cloud infrastructure works at a high level, as well as how the Azure infrastructure as a service and networking options work. And then we have things like Secure Resources. This covers managed identities, hybrid identity management, and role-based access, among other security-related topics. Then we'll cover the Design and Application Storage and Data Access Strategy section. This will cover the different storage options available inside of Azure, as well as how to access our on-prem data from Azure services. After that, we'll go through the Design and Advanced Application section, and this is where we'll talk about high-performance computing, long-running applications, as well as a general discussion of high availability and scalability and what those mean. Then we'll talk about designing Azure web apps. Web apps are part of the app service and it allows for a very simple way to host and scale web applications. And the final topic will be designing a management, monitoring, and business continuity strategy. This covers things such as disaster recovery and monitoring solutions. The information in this learning path is based on the exam's knowledge domains. However, it's presented from the perspectives of a handful of engineers who created it. And that means this information may not sync with the way you learn. So if you need to supplement it with blogs, books, or anything else, then that's what you should do. You're going to need to log into Azure as well and actually use these things for yourself to get some hands-on knowledge. And you'll want to read the Azure documentation as well. It's going to be up to date with the latest changes by Microsoft, so that's going to help you stay current with the changes in the platform. If you're new to Learning Paths, you'll find that between the courses there are going to be quizzes, and they're intended to serve as a learning tool that supplements the course. So you may find that they ask questions that aren't covered in the course material, and that's intentional. It's going to help you broaden your knowledge on the subject. All right, we have a lot to cover, so click on the first course and let's get started.